Thank you for viewing the Danfoss Drive's extended startup video. This video will provide quick startup instructions for a Danfoss VLT FC202 AquaDrive. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Hi, I'm Jeff with Danfoss. Today we have a video that will show you how to start up a VLT AquaDrive for a basic application. The video will consist of editing some common parameters using one of the drive's quick menus. Then I've created a simple drawing that will show you how to connect your I.O. And finally, I can show you a way to verify that the I.O. has been connected properly. Navigating the LCP local control panel and editing parameter values. All right, now we're going to move on to the programming sequence. The first step is going to be to initialize this drive. That's going to put it in factory default settings. The easiest way to do that is to use the main menu key. I'm going to access parameter 14-22, operation mode. Press the main menu key two or more times. will bring you to the top level of the menu, and I'm going to scroll down to parameter group 14. I'm going to enter that group by using the OK key. Now I'm going to move down to 14-2 reset functions. Again, I'll press the OK key to enter that group. And I'll scroll down two parameters to 1422. To make a change to a parameter, you press the OK key. It'll highlight the value where now I can use the up and down arrows to scroll through my choices. You're going to want to choose initialization. And now I'll press the OK key to set, accept that value. The initialization will not actually occur until I cycle AC power to the drive. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do that and remove the AC power. Once the display goes dark, I can power it back up. And we should notice the word initialization or initializing appear on the display. At that point, we know that that was successful. And we're going to notice a couple things here. One, the drive is in an alarm. We're going to go ahead and address that later. And also we notice the drive is in smart start. This is a startup wizard that appears the first time a drive is powered on, or you can access it through the quick menus. This video is not going to focus on the smart start function, so we're going to exit that by pressing the status key first and then OK. Now we have exited the smart start menu. I'm going to head, go ahead and put the drive into North American defaults next. That's going to change anything that was 50 hertz into 60 hertz default values. It saves a lot of time in setting all those parameters manually, just doing it in one shot. So that's why we're going to do that. I'm going to use the main menu key to enter parameter 003. So again, I'll press the main menu button twice to bring me to the top level. I'm going to enter group 0, operation to display, 0-0 basic settings. Now I scroll down to 003. Now I'll make this change from international to U.S. or North America, and I'll accept that change. Now we have an alarm 60 external interlock appears. That's a result of one of the parameters that has changed as a, uh, an, the, due to the, the North American change. So it's digital input 27 is set to a safety interlock by default. If 24 volts is not applied to that terminal or removed from that terminal, it'll generate an alarm 60. So a normally closed safety interlock would normally be placed between terminal 12, which is 24 volt control power, and digital input 27. I have several options here. One, I have a control box wired to this drive right now, so I'm going to go ahead and place or close the switch, which will place a connection between terminal 12 and 27 and I can go ahead and reset that fault. Alternatively, I will open the switch so you can see, again, when you remove control power from 27, the alarm will be generated. So I'm going to use main menu to go to parameter 512, where we see terminal 27 digital input. And this is the function external interlock, which is causing the alarm 60 when the voltage is removed. I'm going to go down and change this to the value no operation, so I have essentially disabled the software safety. At that point, with or without the connection to 27, I can reset that fault. Now we're going to move to the quick menus and move on with the programming, scrolling down to quick setup. The quick setup will be where we enter these basic parameters I mentioned, so I'm going to enter that group. Starting at the top, we have the language, that's fine. 
I'm going to move down with the arrow key to the next parameter, which is the motor speed unit. My choices here are RPM or Hertz. I prefer to use Hertz when we're talking about water and wastewater and pumping applications. So I'll select Hertz there, move down to the next parameter. And now the next five parameters here are associated with my connected motor. So I'm going to enter my connected motor nameplate data in these areas. Parameter 121, motor horsepower. Press the OK key, you'll highlight the value, and I should note here that rather than adjusting one digit at a time with the left and right arrows, you can use the up and down arrow keys that'll move to the next logical sizes. I have a three-quarter horsepower motor, so I'll go ahead and accept that and move down to the next parameter, motor voltage. I have a 230 volt motor connected. I'll move down to the next parameter, 60 hertz. That's automatic based on that North American change I described earlier. Move down to the motor current. Here I'm going to go ahead and use my left and right arrows to adjust these values. And I'm going to move this to 2.9 amps. Again, got that directly off my motor nameplate. Now I move down to the motor nominal speed, which is 1735 RPMs. Go ahead and accept that. And we move on. That'll be the last motor parameter we set here. And now we come to parameter 341, the ramp up time. It's important to note that the ramp times are based on full speed. In other words, it will take 10 seconds to ramp from 0 to 60 hertz or 0 to 1735 RPMs because that's my motor nameplate speed. The ramp down time is similar. It'll take 20 seconds to ramp from full speed to 0. So, of course, it'll take less time to ramp to 0 if you're at a speed lower than 60 hertz. It's important to note that if you have too aggressive of a ramp up time, it'll result in current limit uh, and torque limit warnings generally because the 110% default current limit is not enough to get the motor to the commanded speed in too short of a time. When dealing with the ramp down time, too aggressive or too short of a ramp time will result in similar warnings or alarms or possibly an over voltage trip because of regenerative energy being pushed back into the drive. So you can normally start with the default ramp up and down time of any given drive that will vary a little bit from uh, between the horsepower sizes of the drives. So you can start there, but if you end up getting the warnings I described, then you may want to increase the ramp up time and also increase or extend the ramp down time to avoid those situations. Moving on, the motor load speed limit. This is where you enter the speed that uh, the drive will never dwell below. Uh, in other words, I'm going to go ahead and enter 20 hertz here, and even if I command a reference signal of a speed less than 20 hertz, the drive will not respond to that. 20 hertz will be the minimum. When the reference signal commands a value that is greater than that, then the drive will follow that speed command. This is definitely important for submersible pumps where it's dangerous or, or, or can damage the motor running below that speed, and also in applications where the pump may not move any water until you reach a certain speed, it does not make sense to dwell below that, so you can enter a minimum speed here. The next parameter will be the maximum speed limit in hertz. This drive will never put out a frequency greater than 60 hertz. Due to that, it can be increased for uh, applications where you may want to get a little extra uh, out of your, your pump if applicable, but in our application, we're going to limit it to 60 hertz. And this is the last parameter in the quick setup. It's called AMA, or Automatic Motor Adaptation. This is another motor, a parameter associated with setting up your motor. And what it will do is it will perform a fine tuning between the drive, the cable, and the connected motor. And ultimately, it results in a better motor model, a more accurate motor model. It's going to learn about the connected motor and cable and also accommodate for any long cable distances and, and things such as that. So I'm going to go ahead and enable complete AMA here and press the OK key. It's going to ask me to press the hand on to start. Once I do, the test will be initiated and we'll see a progress bar here. It'll take anywhere from 1 to 10 minutes depending on the size of the drive. Normally smaller drives like this are going to be somewhere around a minute or less. And I should note that it will be normal that you're going to hear the motor making some uh, strange noises, high frequency sounds, uh, etc. And again, that's normal. So I'm going to go ahead and press the hand down key to start this process.
Here we see the progress bar. It's telling us what step it's on. As soon as this completes, it's going to tell us to press OK to accept the values. We'll see that shortly. All right, we're almost complete here. And we're done. So there, like I mentioned, we see the press OK to finish AMA. Once I do that, it's going to accept the values that it learned. OK, so now we're going to move on, and I'm going to show you the control diagram that I mentioned earlier so we can see how the I.O. is connected. And also, uh, to follow up, I'll show you a way that we can, again, check to see that those signals are connected properly and working. Wiring the start command, safety input, and speed reference signal. After the quick setup is complete, we have to wire our start command, our safety input if desirable, and finally your speed reference signal. 100% of Danfoss drives, digital input 18 is the default start input. We're going to make a connection between terminal 12 on the control board, which is 24 volt power, to terminal 18 via a normally open switch. That will be your start contact. If you desire to wire to terminal 27 and use that as a safety interlock, we'll wire a normally closed contact between terminal 12, again, 24 volt control power, and digital input 27. We would program parameter 512, which manipulates the function of terminal 27 to the value external interlock. Just like we saw in the example when I set the quick setup, Opening the contact between 24 volts and terminal 27 when program is external interlock will generate an alarm 60 and release all energy to the motor. Finally, the speed reference terminal must be wired between terminal 53 and 55. 53 is the positive wire, 55 is common. By default, analog input 53 on the drive, which is defined by as the reference resource is scaled to accept 0 to 10 volt signals that are proportional of, to 0 to 60 hertz. If you need to change the scaling of that terminal, you do so in main menu group 6. Press the main menu key two times, scroll down to group 6, analog in and out, 6-1, analog input 53, and here we find the terminal 53 low voltage terminal 53 high voltage and the corresponding speeds that are associated with those voltages. Terminal 53 low reference value by default is 0 hertz and terminal 53 high reference value by default is 60 hertz. If I need to change this to be a 2 to 10 volt signal rather than a 0 to 10 volt signal, I'll simply go and change parameter 610 to 2 volts and now I've scaled the input 2 volts to 10 volts is equivalent to 0 to 60 hertz. At that point, closing the contact between terminal 12 and 18 will start the drive and the speed is changed dependent on the signal wired to analog input 53. Verifying the digital and analog inputs. Well, finally, I'd like to show you a place where you can go in the menus to view your actual raw control signals, and this way we can tell that they're connected properly. So I'm going to use the main menu to go to group 16. 16 is data readouts. I'll go ahead and enter that group, and I'm going to scroll down to 16-6, inputs and outputs. So right here, starting with parameter 1660, this is a binary number representing the status of the digital inputs. Starting with what we would call the most significant bit, all the way to the far right, that zero represents the status of digital input 33. Like I mentioned previously, I am currently wired to all the inputs on this drive, so I'm going to close my switch between 24 volt control power, which is again terminal 12, and digital input 33, and we'll see a one appear here. That confirms that input is wired properly and working. Next we move to the input one to the left will be digital input 32. We'll close that switch. Digital input 29, 27, 19, and 18. So I've proven that my six digital inputs are all working properly. Now we can move down to parameter 1662 where I can see the raw voltage or current signal on analog input 53, which is defined as our reference terminal. 
As I move my control signal up and down, I'm going to notice the value here is going to change from 0 to 10 volts, is, which is currently what I have connected, a 0 to 10 volt signal. And also I can see the corresponding reference hertz go with that, 0 volts, 0 hertz. five volts, 30 hertz. This is of course based on how I've scaled the analog input in the 6-1 group like I showed you previously and moving it up to 60 hertz or 10 volts will represent 60 hertz. So I can see my control signal is connected properly. Go to the status screen, press the auto on key, this drive is in standby, which means it's ready to receive a start command. That tells me that the safety on digital input 27 is currently satisfied. I'm going to close the switch between 12 and 18. This drive is now running. And my analog input 53 reference signal, as it goes up and down like I showed previously, you're going to see the drive follow that command. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.